Hello there everyone and a very happy Monday to you all and a very happy new year. I do hope that you're off to the bestest of a start. So hello there everyone that has dropped in. There are lots of lovely faces that I can see in the chat. So hey there Avril, hey there Rosie Rose, Carol, Star Dragon, Lisa, Joan, Karen and Stacy and Spirit Eagle. So hello there everyone. Thank you so much for joining us and for sharing too. If you do share this live stream, you are in with a chance of winning a $15 gift certificate to the Alter New store. The lovely Roxy will be with me today behind the Alter New badge and she'll be popping in all of the links. So I really do hope that you've had a great day so far. I am going to pop you guys down so we can take a closer look at the stamp set that we'll be looking at today. As we're quite close to the start of the month, we are on the third. On the first, we do release our new Builder Flower, and this one is very, very pretty. So I am going to pop you guys down now. You know, this takes a little second just to play with all of these buttons and then get you down to the tabletop. So here we go. Hello there, everyone that has popped in. Thank you so much for joining us and a very happy new year to you all. So this is the very pretty Build a Flower Candy Stripe Cosmos. And you can see here that we have a six by eight stamp set as well as a coordinating die set. So as this is a layering set, we do have the layering guide in the packaging and I will be showing you how to layer this one up first of all today so if you have had something special happen in the past week or so please let me know because you know i'm nosy and so i would like to know so i am going to stamp my image when i do have a six by eight stamp set like this and it does have the outline there that is the one that i always go to first as it's really going to help you line up all of the rest of the layers and images that you have. Do, do, do. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a bigger block because I think the one that I did have to the side was a little bit too small. Now, as you can see, this is a bit wiggly woggly. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna move this over to this bit here. So I flipped my packaging over and to stop that wiggling about, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place that directly on the outline that we have. It's easier to do it when you can see directly <laughs> over the top. And then I can move this into the correct place that it needs to be. Then I can pick it up with my block. And now I know that when I use the image that's gonna go in here, that that's gonna be in the correct wiggle. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Badia, I'm not sure. Um, I'm, I don't think so as yet. That's why I'm sorry about that. Next, so first up, I am going to go with the obsidian. <laughs> yeah, it is very wibbly wobbly. So I do find that popping it on the packaging makes sure that it is in the correct position. There are probably other tricks out there, but that's the one that I do tend to use so i'm going to just stamp him down and just stamping this onto some nina classic crest so the white and it is four and a quarter by five and a half but that's only because i cut my panels down to that size we may cut this out yet i'm not 100 percent, but we'll see how it goes so i have my little flower in there thank you sue yeah it's a it's a good little tip that I tend to use all of the time. Okay, so I'm going to move him off to the side. And you, as you can see, I've already, <laughs> I've already broken my crafty New Year's resolution, which was to clean my stamps after I'd stamped with them. So day three of the year and that one's gone. So do you guys have any crafty resolutions and have you kept to yours? I'm intrigued because it can't just be me <laughs> that's just broken theirs. Okay. Doo -doo. Hey, Bridget. 
Okay, so I have my first layer down. This is the A1, and I am going to go with some purple. So I don't know if you guys have seen already that I believe the Pantone color of the year is like a periwinkle color. So I'm going to go with the closest ones that we have. And I believe this is the Secret Garden or the Enchanted Garden um, ink set. So it's the Wisteria, the Hydrangea, the Ultraviolet, and also the Andromeda. So I know that Bridget will know which one that is. Okay, to craft more often. Okay, we have that one. Does anyone else have any more crafty resolutions? I'm sorry if I have missed them. Oh, Nico, yeah. I think, yeah, I think quite a lot of us are going to think a little bit of all of the stuff that we've got and hopefully reuse and bring back some things. That would be good. Andromeda is such a pretty name. Um, I'm not sure if the mini inks have been restocked yet. Um, I'm not sure. So that was A1, and then I'm going to go in with A2. And as you can see, that just fit quickly and easily within the layer that we just had. And I used the Wisteria for that one. So I'm then going to move myself up the ink family, and then it's going to be the Hydrangea. Ooh, try something outside your comfort zone. That's a good crafty resolution. Mine is not to always try and... I, ha I have a couple. So I had to clean my inks after each stamping. And as you can see, that's gone. That's, <laughs> that's gone out the window already. The other one is to try not to grab the same ink families all of the time. Bad yet? Yep. Getting the craft room sorted is a good one. I do need to clean mine. Oh no, no desk. Keep stamps organized. Another good one that I've probably already broken. <laughs> Enchanted Garden. Thank you, Bridget. Bridget says that these ones are still available in the mini ink. Thank you, Bridget. So this one is A3. So this is the last detail that we have on the petals. And I will be using the ultraviolet on these ones oh yep rainbow obsidian definitely i love the fact that layering stamps in themselves i believe level the playing field field when you come to stamping so that means whether you've been stamping for five minutes or five years or 50 years you're all going to get the same look with the stamped images, which to me is amazing. And I just love it. So there are all of our petals done. And just look how frilly they look. Frilly, frilly, frilly. It's just so good. Okay. So I'm going to do my center next. Next, and we do have three layers for this piece. I'm going to move to a smaller block. <clears throat> so another little tip that I have is to use a block that's the right size for your stamp. So when I first started stamping, many of you probably already know this story. I don't have many stories, so I'm going to have to <laughs> reuse them. But what I did, so this one's Sunray, is when I started stamping, I thought if I buy the biggest block I can find, that will enable to me to use, you know, nearly every stamp. But if you pot a small, I think this may have been <laughs> one of the first blocks I bought. And if I try and stamp it with this, it is, I mean, it's doable, but you can get a bit of a wiggle. If you have any dirt on this, it will transfer to your paper. So I would always recommend, you know, getting some blocks that are going to fit your your little stamps better. Oh, I'm so glad that you've received your stamp already. Oh, buddy, me four months ago. Oh, stitching. Yeah, at least you're doing something. <laughs> oh, Rose 
laundry rows. Yeah, that may be a good idea. That might get me into cleaning, but we can we we will never know. So this is the chamomile, and I'm just gonna pop that into place. Now with me and flower centers, if it's in there, that's good enough for me. I'm not gonna try and fiddle around to make sure that all of those tiny little circles are in the right place because it's still gonna look amazing. Next up, one of my favorite oranges, which is the Snapdragon. Oh, jo Joanne, this is a very, very pretty stamp set. And as you can see, I've just popped that in and it looks cool. So we're good. Foliage, Bridget, yep, this one here is my favorite on the stamp set. Me and Bridget have this thing where um, we will kind of use the same piece over and over again. And that I think that's going to be that one for me. Okay, so I have this piece. Now I'm not, I think this needs to be the mid shade. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and check it out. And yep, this piece here is going to be the mid shade. <clears throat> so I'm going to go with the grass field for this one. Do, 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 do. Pop that in, stamp that down. That is such like a pure green, one of my favorites. And then we have the little inny piece, which is going to go on this piece, this is going to be the lightest. So I'm going to go with some fireflies. Happy New Year, everyone that has dropped in. Hope that you're having a lovely day so far, wherever you are in the world. I do love the fact that everyone can watch at the same time and we can all chat and get to know each other. It makes me happy, you know. Okay, so last but not least, we have the Shadow Creek. Oh, I have another piece here. Don't worry, I have another ink. We're good. So I'm going to pop that in. Because we've figured out where that stem goes before we stamped it properly, and I, if I'd have stamped it properly, it would have been nice and straight, but I had a little bit of a wiggle. And we have two pieces for the really darkest shadows. This is going to go right at the top of the stem. I'm going to use some mountain pine for this one. And then we have the C4, which is going to add the darker kind of swishes or flicks from that. There we go. Oops. Okay. So. I am going to be doing a little bit of blending today. Hi there, Anne. Oh, that would be so cute, Sarah. Just a little fairy or even a, like a butterfly. If you have one, that would be very pretty too. Okay, I'm going to grab my satin tape so we can mask out an edge. I don't think I added enough, but we're going to be okay. So I'm just going to butt that up to the bottom of my panel. Not the straightest, but hey -ho. at home, <laughs> you can make sure it's nice and straight. Again, putting that up right to the top. I'm not going to worry about this bit because it will be covered when we pop this end piece down. I do love some blender. Blending, blending, blending. So I'm going to pop that down. And I always say that a little bit of yellow will truly brighten a card up. So that is what I'm going to be using. But before I do that, I have already cut out one of the flowers from some masking paper. You do want to make sure that you cut from the non-pretty side 
because that side is the backing. So the pretty side is the backing. Always make sure that you stamp or die cut from this way with the masking paper. And I've just used the die set and just used the flower die just to cut that out. You could also stamp and then cut this out if you really do love a little bit of fussy cutting. But I was in a little bit of a hurry today, so that's why I have done that. Oh, Kathleen, I'm glad I've used your favourites. Apparently, these are the Pantone colours of the year, so that's why I've gone for some purples today. I don't think we do have any dragonflies. Maybe that's something that we need to, you know, rectify and change that up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press that down, and I'm going to do some ink blending over that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. and I want some yellows yep this satin tape is my favorite so I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna grab the chamomile do, do, do. do you find that adding yellow on really lifts a card even if it's just a tiny bit it will really make everything more brighter and shiner and shinier and happier. Dragonfly, we need to put it on the list. And because purple and yellow are like the opposite sides of the color, color wheel, these are really going to contrast nicely with each other. I might add some like darker color coming up from the top. Bottom, 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 bottom. Hmm, where did I put my Snapdragon? He is there. I'm hoping to use this mask again, so I'm trying not to add <laughs> too much stuff onto it. But hey, hey, home, I get too excited. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this nice and gently. Because I want to reuse that. Aww. You can reuse this masking tape. All I would do is wipe the ink off this. Because you don't want, you know, to get that ink anywhere else. So I just move that over to the side so I can sort that out at a later date. Oh, I just did a little bit of a pull. Okay. And then last piece here. Did I miss something, Sarah and Bridget? <clears throat> Thank you. You know I can't help my humming. I just I just hum. I hum. So I am going to pop a sentiment on because that means that this one's then complete. But just look how bright and happy just that bit of yellow has made this. At uh, Lisa, I did just a square of the panel because I think it's more interesting that way um because things are kind of coming out of it it's going to give it a little bit more interest to the eye you can definitely do the whole panel if you wanted to but i just find that focusing in on this panel here and making your eye rest there is going to give you a different interest and look to doing the whole of it okay hopefully that makes sense but there's our first one done this one is very bright and shiny. I love that yellow. Okay, so 
So now we're going to do something a little bit more opulent. I'm going to use the same stamp as before. So I'm going to take my large image. I will give it a little bit of a wipe because actually, no, I'm not. It's, it's going to be fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. All fine. So I'm going to pop that down. I don't need to worry about the wiggle because this time I am not going to be using the layering stamps. I'm just going to be using this little piece here. Let's move you over to there. I'm going to grab myself a panel. I will be doing quite a bit of heat embossing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take some baby powder. Any baby powder will do or some talc. You could also use cornstarch or corn flour. I believe they're the same thing. Um, but they do work as an anti-static powder too. Okay, so I am going to grab a spare piece of paper. I was hoping that, uh -huh, I do have some. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be stamping this in gold. Gold, gold. Well, I'm going to stamp it in embossing ink and then heat setting it in gold. And I'm just grabbing a gold. I'm going to use antique gold for this one. Hello everyone that has popped in. Uh, I do hope that you're having a great day so far. So I have added, added my anti-static powder onto my panel already and I'm going to be using embossing ink. So this is a sticky ink that will grab onto your embossing powder. You could also use pigment ink too. That would work in the same way as it dries a lot less quick than dye inks a lot less quick mm. sometimes me and my grandma are not fabulous okay so i'm stamping that down giving it a good squidge i do feel that sometimes i may be a bit too violent with my stamps but they can take it we're good and i always forget to grab out my stamping mat so I'm sorry. So I'm just going to be placing over some embossing powder now. Now, don't worry if you put too much on. It will just kind of flick off. What I'm going to do, and I'm going to redo that because I'm not happy with what I have down there. But that's fine. Everything's fine. Sorry, everyone. I should have used a stamping platform. And my stamping mat. Do I have one? Yes, yes, I do. Ta-da! This one is probably the dirtiest stamping mat you've ever seen. But you know what? I'm going with it. I'm just going to knock off that powder, flip my panel over and start again. If I was doing a real video, that bit would have been edited out. <laughs> I am. Sorry, everyone. Okay. Again, anti-static powder. All right. Stamp. Check. Embossing ink check okay Doo -doo -doo. Boom. we're gonna get that into place and give him a good old squidge squidgy squidge 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 down the stem because i missed that part last time okay Hopefully, fingers crossed, we're doing better. Hey, and look at that perfect image. Should have used my stamping mat the first time. Okay, I am going to leave this heat up a little bit and then I will take it to my thing. You could also kind of start at the back and that's not going to move any of that powder around. And then when you see it start to go from the bottom, you can switch it up to the top. That's how I kind of go with mine. So that's our first one down. And I'm going to stamp two more. But like I said before, I have my mask, so these are reusable. I 
thank you for the thumbs up everyone okay so i'm just gonna you need to make sure that that's nice and cool otherwise you can actually smear the embossing powder so we've got that down time for some more squidging okay so i'm gonna ink this up again do, 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 do. and i kind of just want those heads let's pop in that oh, squidge 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 okay now i could remove this but i'm being a bit lazy i should remove this i that's what i should have said i should remove this but i'm being lazy i'm trying to save some time so i'm leaving it there if i was at home i am at home but if i was by myself i would remove that And let's do one more up this side. Time efficient. Thank you, Sarah. Yes, that's, that's what I'm doing. It's like when I'm, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm making sure that I've got that down. If you do find that you're not getting enough embossing powder sticking to your image, it may be the fact that it does need a little bit more um, embossing ink on it. And we do sell the replacement, not the refill as well. But I do need another refill because I used all my. Just squidge this down. Oh, such a workout. Okay. Maybe there's a kind of workout we can do while crafting. And maybe this is it. And die cutting as well. Okay, just going to tap that off. <laughs> Bridget, yeah. that I'm getting sweaty when I'm sweat <laughs> when I'm stamping is not great. Oh, okay. Oh, Melanie, happy birthday. I hope you're having a good one. Really, really do. Okay, so I have all of my stamping done. Okay. And then we're going to pull this one off. And again, this is still nice and sticky, so I can pop this into my stamp packaging and then reuse it. That's what I really love about this masking paper from Altenew. It's got like the perfect stick to it. <gasps> Look how pretty that looks. All right, let's make it more opulent, shall we? I'm going to keep this out because this is a good, you know, place for doing some blending. <laughs> That's my fine for blending. Okay, so... I'm going to start with some puffy heart and my largest blending tool. So when I'm doing a huge background like this, I would always recommend using the largest of the blending tools. <laughs> Avril, <laughs> yes, yes, you do. Avril says she does a workout every time she crafts. Okay, so I'm adding it to, to the sides because I want the inside bit to be less dark than the outside. I love this blending tool. Oh, it's just so fabulous the way that it puts the ink down. It's just kind of so gentle. And it does give you a really great kind of seamless blend. I'm not gonna to worry too much about the first layer. So the first layer of ink that you put down there is kind of like a base. So that's gonna kind of 
slightly dampen the surface that you're working on so it's going to make any more color that you put on top of it easier to add on without adding smears so always start with your lightest color so i then have some purple wine now again these aren't colors that i normally use that often but as i'm trying to you know use more different colors more variety of colors this is why i took these ones out of my shelf today ink and twist ink and twist see there's another workout we can do the ink and twist although it does sound like a dance move so this is the ink and twist so we're just going to ink and then twist it's always easier to twist your cardstock rather than trying to get into weird positions with your wrist okay so there is that down and then if you wanted to you can ink over again with your lightest color and that's going to blend everything really really nicely yep so yep i'm really trying to get out of my color box Okay, and then last but not least is the Cor um, Cosmic Berry. So I'm gonna use this just around the edges. Thank you so much for sharing everyone. I, you know, thank you so much for sharing. If you do share this live stream, you are in with a chance of winning a $15 gift certificate to the Ulta News store. I don't think I mentioned that as often as I should. So I am sorry, everyone. Oh. I'm not really a purple girl, but this one here, I'm liking how dark that looks around the outside. It looks so pretty. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. And then we just got this edge to go. Oh, crafts by three. Rose, I hope that you have a good day and you can always catch the replay if you want to. Okay. Oh, thank you, Lisa. I'm glad you're liking it. And what I'm going to do now is to blend that out a little bit more around the outside edge with the purple wine. I haven't done this technique in such a long, long time. And it's amazing that you like do the same technique over and over again, but then you forget about it because you've moved on to a different technique. So I'm glad that I thought about doing this one today. Okay, so let's make it a little bit more opulent, shall we? Uh, 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 uh. Let's grab some gold. Oh, I'm sorry, Rosie. I'm I'm a blue girl. <laughs> oh, I hope everything's good though, Black Nico. Wishing you well. Okay, so I've got the antique gold, and I'm just gonna add some splatter on. Hey, we've already got a bit of gold on there. We have our royal purple. Let's really take this to the next level and kind of add in some more opulence. I'm trying to add more of the splatter where we have the image and then kind of have it drift off a little bit from there. Okay. If you want some finer splatter, you could use a smaller paintbrush. That would work too. Mm -mm -mm. Ah, but there we go i'm thinking that looks good mm -mm -mm. but look how pretty that is ah, right so we have that one we have this one very very different and let's try something else you know we're here let's have one more go at this flower and we're just gonna use this is why it's dirty because i pulled up and <laughs> just put it away i should make a 
resolution to clean my mat, but we all know how that's going to go. So, right, I need another piece of paper. Okay, so let's create something very different to the other two that we've done that are very different as well. Okay, I don't know if this will get finished, but hey, we can have a go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. mm -mm 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 -mm. Squidge. I should have kept my stamp in mind just for that, but I think we're good. I am going to heat set this a little bit. Okay. All right. Because we have an outline in this, this means we can use all of our favorite color mediums to color this in the prettiest of colors or we could also go for a little bit of shading so i have the monochrome shading pencils from Altenew. now they do go in varying like depths of color i'm just gonna see if i can grab there we go so they will give you different color variants depending on the hardness of the lead so the less hard the lead is the darker the color you're going to get from the pencil okay hopefully that makes sense but you can see just how cool you are all right i am gonna go with a lighter one first and I'm just going to add in some shading. All I'm doing is just flicking outwards with this. And you can use, I'm going to move you down. Sorry, everyone. And just having the layers on the layering guide, you can kind of see where you need to color so even though you have a layering stamp that you don't necessarily need to use the layers you can definitely just use the layers for practice on where you need to add in your darker points so i'm just having a good old play really just flicking so if you do color with artist markers or alcohol markers this is going to give you the kind of technique that you want to use but it's going to give you a different look so i am still kind of flicking adding my shading where i think that it's going to be the darkest so as you can see here and to get this a cupped shape you will need to add a curved line in so i always find that for petals you don't want to do a super straight line the curvier you get your little flick, the more it's going to look like that petal is actually curved. Okay. So we're doing that. My husband actually asked if I had another set of these, and I was like, nope just these ones and these ones are mine so <laughs> okay so you can see that I'm just adding where I think that shading would be look how cute that is all right okay so I'm gonna then gonna jump up to a darker pencil just to add in some darker points now if you want to create the look of little frills or i can't say it properly thrills frills in your petals you can do it's easy enough to do i will show you so i'm just adding in some 
dog points and then I got distracted because I was like yep I'm just gonna do that a little bit and then that a little bit okay so you can add in some darker thrill frills if you come in from the edge and that will deepen those creases Ooh, look how cool that looks it looks I mean, if you wanted to, if you stamped the image in gray and then use the pencils, it may actually look that, you know, you may have drawn it yourself. Okay. All right. So I have left a little bit of a mess on that, but it's pencil. So, you know, it comes off with an eraser and I am using my trusty conditioner eraser. Let's add a little bit of a stripe behind this. Rock, it does look like the rock collection. So I am gonna reuse my tape from before. So this had yellow on it, so I will use, I'll reuse some yellow. Actually, what I'm gonna do yeah, I'm going to pop that there. Okay. I should really brush off the excess before I go in with some yellow, but hey. And I just want these stripes coming from the bottom. I'm not going to go past that point. So I'm just using the kind of residue that was on my blending tool. I would spend a little bit more time just to make sure that these are nice and straight. I'm just kind of moving these around a little bit and then oops, make sure they st stuck down nicely but then what you're going to get is various different shades just using the same color because we're going to have like a number of different levels ah oops it stuck together too much for me to use okay Might need some more yellow in my thing. Okay. But I just wanted to show you a couple of different ways of doing different masking. You don't need to do, you know, masking in the same way all of the time, but there we go. So I was originally going to do two cards today, but then I had an idea and I see my shady pencil on the desk. So I went for this one as well. You know what it's like, everyone. You get something in your head and you just have to do it. So here are the very three different projects that we have using the very pretty and very versatile, as you can see, Build a Flower Candy Stripe Cosmos. Because we have the outline in there, you can do loads of different techniques. You can use all of your favorite coloring mediums. You can use the layers. The sky is the limit with this one. Could I please hold the left card of this one closer? Okay, so I'll show you each of them and then we can move. So there we go. So that's the first one that we did. Then we did some opulent blending. That one is very cool. And then we also have some shading and some different kind of striped blending on 
the bottom there. Okay. Do, do, do. Just going to move you guys up a little bit. <clears throat> hey. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us in our live today. It has been a pleasure. We really do hope that you have had a fabulous new year, too. Thank you to the amazing Roxy for being behind the badge and popping in all the links to the products that we have used today. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me, and I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye.